Hey, hello, and welcome to a new video. My name is Herr Buda, and I'm so happy that you clicked on this video. So, I have a hair tip of you today. It's like more a question that I get many times. How often do I have to wash my hair? So this is a big thing for many people and a question that I get many, many, many times. So I will try to give a good explanation how a shampoo works, which one is the best, and there is no clear answer for everybody, but I will try to explain. Okay, but before we start, can I please ask you to subscribe to my channel, press that notification bell, you can follow me on Instagram, you can also follow me on TikTok. We are going to trying to explain how often do you have to shampoo your hair? This is a question I get many, many, many times. Many hairdressers all over the world has this same question received from a client. I always try to say less is better, one or two times in a week, but in some cases, it's not always a good thing to wait that long. So if you have really thin hair, greasy hair, it's not the same as if you have thick or curly hair. So there is no straight answer, a right answer for everybody. So I will try to explain which one is the best for you. So you have a very big dilemma. If you are washing your hair or your scalp, because it's not only your hair that you're washing, you're washing your scalp also. So if you, if you are washing too much, then your follicle will produce more sebum and your hair will get greasier and greasier. All over your body, you will have a sebum layer. It has to be to protect your skin, so it stays really soft and it's protected for the environment. But if you are washing it too less, it can get really hardcore dandruff, and it can get your skin really sensitive, blocked porous, and even hair loss can occur. I don't want to give any any credit or judgment to the no poo uh, movement. If you don't know what a no poo uh, treatment is, you can look it up on the internet. I will not spend a lot of time explaining, but it's like not washing your hair for months or for years, and it will benefit uh, your scalp. I have seen good things. I have seen people that have really good hair, but also I have seen bad things. I will have no judgment on the poo, on the no poo uh, technique, but the main thing of that is, is it started uh, with criticizing the ingredients that a shampoo has. For example, if you wanna wash your hair, that's my main thing that I wanna say. If you wanna wash your hair, use an organic shampoo, a really soft product and what is a soft shampoo? Well, it's a shampoo with no aggressive, toxic ingredients. So I have two products in my salon. First of all, I had Philip Martens. I used it already think, for seven or eight years. SLS, paraben free, uh, pack free. I will explain what it all is. And now since one year, I'm using Authentic Beauty Concept, Authentic Beauty Concept and the Italian uh, Philip Martin. So this is Italian, this is German. This is from Henkel, so this is Schwarzkopf. It's a different uh, product of the Schwarzkopf thing, but also organic with all the bad ingredients outside these products. And there are many, many brands that are already releasing these ingredients uh, because they are very bad. And sometimes you can read uh, pack-free, sulfate-free, but what is that really? What are these ingredients and why are they so bad for your scalp or your, or your hair? So first of all, we have sodium lauryl sulfate, SLES, S-L-E-S. What are these sulfates? So it's a really strong detergent that is mixing with the sebum. So it's taking the sebum and it pulls the sebum out of your scalp, but it's so strong that it's really damaging your skin and your hair really badly. And then you have the sodium laurel sulfate. So the first one was sodium laurel sulfate. So this is the sodium laurel sulfate. So SLS, an ingredient that 
makes your shampoo really nicely foam. Everybody loves, if you wash your hair, a nice foam. But if you shampoo your hair, you don't need this foam. This foam is really, really, really bad. It takes your color out, it takes your natural sebum and your oil out of your hair. So it's really having a bad toxic reaction in your body. Parabens are also very harmful. They prevent to create a bacteria inside your product. But it can also mimic the hormone estrogen. Another main ingredient in some shampoos that are really bad is sodium chloride, some kind of salt. It makes your shampoo and conditioner thicker. But if you have a really sensitive scalp, it can make your scalp more itchy and also causes hair loss. PEC or PEG is also a thickening agent, but it's taken from petroleum. Petroleum? Oh my God. Ugh. But there has been no sufficient research on how damaging this toxic ingredient is for your hair. But common byproducts in PEG can be very harmful. DEA or diotanolamine are also emulsifiers. In 1998, there was been a research that these ingredients are linked to animal cancer. But the effect on humans are unclear. Europe has already banned DEA from all the products in cosmetics. So if you are using a shampoo, try to use as soft as possible. There are many other ingredients that are really bad. You can look it up in Google, but otherwise this video will take too long. These are the most aggressive ones uh, and there are many other ones. So I'm using Authentic Beauty Concept and Philip Martens. These ingredients are not inside, also not tested on animals, very important for me. If you have a shampoo that gives you a lot of foam, then you know there are bad ingredients inside. So don't use them. And I explained it in another hair fell video, a reaction video that every product, and I received some comments that it's not true, but it is true. Every product that you are using on your scalp, these ingredients go inside your bloodstream. It is. Otherwise your, your, your skin will absorb nothing and of course a cream can goes only in the upper layer but the main ingredients these bad ingredients go inside your bloodstream try to use a shampoo don't think how much do i have to shampoo my hair but first of all buy a good product buy a, an organic shampoo and this will be the first step for you to have healthy scalp and a healthy hair. Of course, if you are using an organic product, your hair will feel different. It will not feel so thick in the beginning and so clean in the beginning because it's all these ingredients that makes you feel this kind of thing. Your hair feels very soft, but it's these bad toxic ingredients that makes your, your hair feel soft. That's the main thing that these products do. So in the beginning, maybe you will not like it. It's not foaming so much, my hair is not so thick. But many of my clients says that they see after a few times, some weeks, some months maybe, they see a difference. So their hair will be uh, toxic free. It takes time. If you stop smoking, it takes time for your lungs to go healthy. So it's the same thing with your skin so, and your hair. So first of all, all these toxic ingredients has to go out and then you will start to feel good about these organic ingredients. And one thing I have to say, it's not because you have to shower every time because you stand up in the morning and your hair is completely on each direction. Uh, you know, you have a very bad hair day. So you go into the shower and you wash your hair. It's not necessary. Just make it wet. If you wetten your hair, you don't have to shampoo it. Of course, if you have very greasy hair, then maybe you can apply one time dry shampoo. But if you have very greasy hair, maybe if you are using the good shampoos and you have the time and you don't put your hands in your hair every day, then uh, you can wait for two days and that will be okay for you. If you wait two days, you don't have to wait for once in a week. That's not 
the thing you have to go for because it's too far from your problem. You have greasy hair, you cannot have the buildup of, your, of the sebum on your skin. You will have dandruff and you have an irritated skin. For you, if you have greasy hair, don't wash it once in a week, maybe two days. But you don't have to wash it every day in the shower because your hair is in every direction. So remember that you need your skin to be oily for a protection layer. So it's a natural process. So if you take this natural oil, sebum, away from your hair, your follicle will produce more. So it will be greasier and greasier and greasier. You have to wait, if you wait two days or, or maybe three days, then you will have to go two days and then every day, the more you wash, the more your follicle will produce. So it's just a very small group that has fine hair or greasy hair that can wash every day so they don't have this buildup. Otherwise they have different problems. For the average person, two or three times in a week, it's okay. But there is no clear answer on the question, how often do I have to shampoo? So if your scalp is feeling greasy, it's itching, so it's time to wash. You don't have to wait if it's itching, you have to wash it. It's very okay to use dry shampoo or volume powder uh, in any form because it absorbs the sebum. But if you are using it too much, your pores can be clogged. So I, I hope you have some kind of clear answer. There's no clear answer, but I hope you get some tips. One person is different than the other one, but with these tips and this explanation, starting with the organic products with all these in bad toxic ingredients outside, it, it will be possible that you ha have to shampoo less and your scalp will be less irritating. You have to test it. And if you are having like a lazy day and it's greasy, maybe you wait one day, put it in a bun and you can train your, uh, your follicle don't to produce too much. So this is also one thing you can do. But this was my video about this issue. How often do I have to shampoo my hair? I hope it was clear. If you had a lot of tips of this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, press that notification bell. You can follow me on Instagram. You can also follow me on TikTok. All I'm going to say is, ciao kiss.